God move through his heart and speak to your church. And we bless you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Children's Church are dismissed. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. That's what all I can say is wow. What a beautiful church you have here. And I'm not talking about the four walls and the roof. I felt the love of Christ the minute I walked in here today. And let me just say, I feel a, a real privilege to come here and speak. And I don't take it lightly each, each time I speak. When I go from church to church, and sometimes I don't know exactly where I'm going, but I take the word of God with me. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we gather here today, we just ask your blessing upon uh, this church, we ask, Lord, uh, everything that's done here today to glorify and honor you. Lord, I just pray for your Holy Spirit to speak through me. You, Lord, use me. Lord, uh, and I just thank you, Lord, that through your word, Lord, we love us just the way we are, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Little little introduction, my name is Mitch Adams, uh, as Pastor Jay mentioned, I thank you for his introduction, but really who I am is insignificant, it really doesn't matter, it's what I'm doing and why I'm here today is to, to share God's word and what the Gideons have been doing, have been doing since 1899. I want to start out by a testimony I found it in the trash. Unfortunately, that's where some New Testaments end up, don't they? We'd like to see uh, growth through every New Testament that's handed out, but sometimes that's not always the case, is it? Every year the Gideons hand out Bibles down at the Bloomsburg Fair. You may have seen us in the educational building. What a wonderful opportunity it is to hand out Bibles. Uh, Last year, we handed out over 4,600 New Testaments. Uh, the wonderful thing is you don't know who you're going to meet. You don't know what their reactions are going to be. And you don't know where they're coming from. They could be from across the street, across the state. I've actually handed out Bibles that people from out of the country. People from out of the country could not believe that they were free. Or sometimes we kind of take it, the, the Bible for granted as far as the price is concerned. Since some countries, they can't afford a Bible. Some countries, that means that's a meal to them. They can't afford a Bible. So it, it means a lot more to some people than others. One year, uh, a group, of, I work at Wilkes University. I'm a machinist there. And, uh, a group of my former students come walking through this educational building. And they were about four or five of them. And about the same time I saw them, they saw me. And they stopped, and they didn't know quite what to do. Well, should we go forward and talk to him? Should we make a left turn? Or They didn't know quite what to do, but they came forward. And we reminisced a little bit. We started talking. Uh, I expressed my faith to him, and I asked him, I said, would you like a, a New Testament? And I have to admit, at the one student, I, was, I really admired his honesty. He said, I'll take one that's going to end up in the trash outside the door. Unfortunately, that's where some Bibles end up. But this is where my testimony starts. You see, when I was in high school, I, I graduated from Berwick Area High School. That was, uh, I graduated long before George Curry was a the coach there. Uh, but nevertheless, there was this bully in school. I think every school probably had a bully. He was a big guy. I think he maybe missed a few years or held back, but, but nevertheless, he was, he was a bully. He got enjoyment out of bullying people. So just like those students, when you was coming down the hall, you didn't know whether you should stop and make a left turn or you wanted to avoid him, you want to stay away from him. 
Well, his uh, thirst for crime grew. He ended up stealing a car. He ended up in prison. That's what happens when you steal cars and get caught, right? But he went to prison. One day, he was, one, one, I was on his way back to his cell, and right there on top of that trash can laid a New Testament. And I don't know what taunted him, but he reached down and pulled that New Testament out of the gar- garbage, and he took it back to his cell with him. What, what made him pull that Bible out of the te- garbage? I think it was the Holy Spirit prompting him. He read that took that back to his cell and started reading it and he couldn't put it down and his thirst for crime became a thirst for God's word how do I know this we actually became friends when he was released for prison he started a home church in his own house and started leading others to Christ he's no longer with us and I actually have that new testament that he pulled out of the garbage he gave it to me Uh, So just even from out of the garbage, God's word can go forth. Isaiah 55, 11 says, So shall my word go out of my mouth, and it will not return to me void, but it will accomplish what I please. So who are the Gideons? I think most people have heard of the Gideons, but not everyone. We were doing a Bible distribution at some local hotels recently, and the one re- young receptionist, we went in and we explained who we were, why we were there, and they're Gideons. I never heard of the Gideons. So not everyone is aware of who the Gideons are. I was talking to a co-worker a few years ago, and I expressed he saw my little butt, and he said, well, what, what's a Gideon? And the way he said it, he, he thought maybe it was a new car they came out with or something, but he didn't know quite what the Gideons were. So I don't want to assume everyone knows who the Gideons are. The Gideons have been an organization of professional and Christian men organized in 1899. And if I do my math right, that's about 125 years the Gideons have been handing out Bibles. It started by two salesmen that traveled, and they got together and they decided, well, we go to his hotel rooms. How many people spend so much time in a hotel room? And what's there back then? I imagine there was no TV. What's there to do? They read the Bible. Now, how, why can't we share this with everyone else? So they start every hotel they stopped at. They started putting hotels in these Bibles. Uh, the Gideons right now have a membership of over 250,000 members. So I'm standing here by myself, but I'm backed by over 250,000 members, along with the auxiliary, their wives. So the Gideons have been uh, a membership, like I said, a professional and and businessman with the same purpose as we have right here in this church, is to lead others to Christ. They are handing out Bibles at a rate of one million every five and a half days in over 106 different languages. How is that possible? How, how can we possibly hand out a million Bibles in less than a week? I heard one say one, someone say one time, think about your heart beating. Every time your heart beats, one testament is being handed out. How is that possible through churches just like this one? Churches all across this country and in other countries handing out Bibles. Let me assure you, every donation that goes out goes directly towards the purchase of New Testaments. The Gideon organization is totally funded by membership dues. So we pay a yearly dues and that's where the organization is funded or through voluntary work through the members. Full Bibles are placed in motels, uh, airline sh- uh, airlines, cruise ships, dentist offices. I was at my chiropractor's a few months ago and I was pleased that there was one sitting outside, not in the drawer, but outside the, uh, the, the office on a counter. It was a little bit tethered and then in, 
but I looked at it as a good thing because it was being used. It was being uh, looked at. I don't know where this statistic comes from. We had a guest speaker at our, our faith fund rally, and he said a Bible in a hotel is viewed an average 123,000 times. One Bible could possibly lead 123,000 people to Christ. I don't know where he came up with that statistic, but I'm sure somebody did the math. I'm not a mathematician. But just think about what one, one Bible has an opportunity to do. That Bible that I have from that, that gentleman, I still have it and is still being used. <coughs> And he had it marked up from front to back. Personal Worker's Testament. PWTs, they call them. Some people call it spiritual GPS. It's a road map to Christ, right? In the back, there's a road to salvation, how to get saved. There's a help section. So if you're in time of need, and you don't know quite where to go in the Bible, in the back, there's a help session that'll point you to scriptures to help you. Now, it's hard to nail down what is the most popular verse in the Bible because they're all popular, right? But we think about probably John 3.16 is might be the most well-known uh, scripture in the Bible. In the front, it's in 26 different languages in the, in the personal worker's testament. So some people call them spiritual GPS's. I don't know if I'm totally on board with that because, you know, I use a GPS because I travel around quite a bit and sometimes it takes me in different directions, right? There's only one way to God. I like to call them seeds. <coughs> As we're handing out New Testaments, we're casting seeds, aren't we? We're praying, we're hoping that they fall on good ground. But as scripture says, sometimes it doesn't. It falls on stony ground or dry ground. We pray that it falls on fertile ground as we're handing them out. Some people call them the sword. You know, God's word is sharper than any two edges short. So some people call them swords. But either way, like I said, I get myself in trouble because sometimes I call it the Gideon New Testament. It's not, it's God's word. It's just being handed out by the Gideons. Large print Bibles are placed in, in nursing homes, uh, hospitals. Uh, actually, I use a, a large print Bible myself. Uh, I'm right to that point where I do have glasses, but if I have a large print, I don't need um, this one here. I have a hard time reading, right? <coughs> we do have... I have a bunch of them here if anybody's interested in it. It's a Bible app that you can download on your phone. A lot of, I shouldn't say younger people, now I'm getting too personal here, but a lot of people use their phone for, instead of their Bible. And that's, that's a great opportunity. You get different translations, uh, different languages on there, but you can download that app onto your phone and always have it with you. Uh, that's a big thing. I like I like having a Bible with me personally, but if having a phone app is a, a, also a great opportunity. New Testaments are handed out in colleges, the military, emergency workers. They do come in different colors. You have, may have seen them in different colors. The militaries are green, colleges uh, may be orange. So they do come in different colors. Same material on the inside but they come in different colors just for distribution purposes. Once a year, we go down to Bloomsburg University and do a Bible blitz. Uh, we're not allowed in the buildings, but they can't stop us from being on the sidewalks. And we hand out a lot of New Testaments at colleges. I, working at a college, I have the privilege, uh, we have a Christian fellowship club and I have the privilege of being the advisor for that Christian Fellowship Club. And it's amazing in the four years, unless they go to a master's, sometimes six years, in the four years, how I've seen students grow through God's word. Don't always assume when they come to the Christian Fellowship Club that they have 
a background in, in Christianity. Sometimes they come up, had students come that their parents weren't uh, following God. And these come, kids come there searching. They're looking. I've seen them start out there uh, in the first year, and they're, they're quiet, and they sit in a corner. <coughs> By their fourth year, they're actually leading the club. Uh, so I've seen a God's work in that Christian fellowship club. And I have to be honest, I'm a little bit selfish. I feel sometimes I pick, take more away from that Christian fellowship club than I'm giving, just seeing and uh, young people on fire for God. But it's a wonderful opportunity. Uh, so one New Testament, one New Testament, and obviously inflation is about a dollar seventy-five right now. Uh, but don't look at it as a dollar seventy-five. Look at it as you're planting a seed. For less than a cup of coffee, you could change someone's life. I heard it say one time, you may not be able to change the whole world, but you could change the whole world for one person. And let's face it, if we went to Starbucks, we may be able to change three or four lives, right? It get pretty expensive, but less than a cup of coffee, we can actually change someone's life. Five dollars would buy a, a full buy, purchase a full Bible. So without churches like this, this all wouldn't be possible. Out front on a sign, you could put a, a sign out front that says, we distribute Bibles in over 200 countries in 106 different languages. We're all working at the same goal is to lead others to Christ. Gideons come from churches just like this one. I attend a, a Calvary Bible Chapel up in uh, Hunlock Creek, PA. I've been there uh, uh, 20 plus years. I call out my home church. And I also feel the privilege to go out and speak to other churches. I expressed to the pastor this morning, one of the most difficult things of going out and speaking to different churches is I want to go back to all of them. I meet people and I hear different services and I, I want to go back to all of them, but obviously you, you can only go in one place at a time, right? And I feel myself growing as I go out and speak. And you may ask, well, what do you mean by growing? Well, you're obviously we're growing in the Lord, but getting to meet new people and uh, hear God's word, different messages and worshiping together, praying together, I feel I'm becoming more comfortable with myself. So that's how I feel that I'm growing. It's, on, it's, it's a privilege and an honor to, to actually go out and, and spread God's word. So how are you able to help? Prayer is the strongest tool for a Gideon. Uh, we have camp meetings. We have prayer meetings all the time. We pray. We pray. We have a, a prayer calendar that we uh, stick to. So pray for the Gideons because it's getting more and more difficult uh, to spread God's word. There are a few hotels that we are no longer allowed to put Bibles into, unfortunately. Pray that that would change. Pray that uh, open doors. Pray that doors would be open through Christ's word. Some churches are no longer allowing Gideons to come in and speak. Why, I, I don't know. But pray about it. Pray that God's word will, will go forth. The Gideon card display. I notice you have one in the back. So there's different types of cards. This one is in recognition of. I don't know if you're familiar with these or not. I use them all the time. You know why? Because I have a hard time. I'm poor at making choices. When someone's ill... Maybe someone graduates college. Maybe someone's in the hospital. Unfortunately, the fact of life, someone passes away. What do you do? What do you say? <clears throat> what do you send them? It's a perfect opportunity to send a card. These cards come with a self-addressed envelope in them. So what you do is you'd fill out that card, and you'd put a name in there, and you would say, I'm purchasing Bibles in your name and sending them out. What a perfect opportunity, what a perfect gift that is for someone. 
And then you would just fill out the, the other envelope and send it into the Gideons. The bulletin inserts. These bulletin inserts we hand out from church to church. We, uh, some are laying on the back table, but they also have a self-addressed envelope. So maybe you're not prepared today, but you would like to donate, uh, uh, give a donation to the church for distributing Bibles. Or maybe you know, know someone that isn't here today that would, would like to contribute to the Gideon organization you can do so by just filling out that self-addressed envelope and sending it into the Gideon organization. Have you ever considered becoming a Gideon? Scripture says the harvest is great, but workers are few. And just like every other organization, uh, numbers are still up, but we're always looking for, for new people, and more members. Someone asked me one time, why did you become a Gideon? I thought, for a second, I said, boy, imagine, imagine my life without God's word in it. Imagine your life without God's word in it. And then stop and think for a minute. I have the opportunity that I could spread God's word, that I could put that into someone's hand. We can't save. It's God's word that saves. We have the opportunity that we can hand out God's word, that we can maybe make a change in someone's life. And like was mentioned this morning, we don't know what people are going through. I heard a, a speaker, J, David Jeremiah, like David Jeremiah, say one time, we're all like ducks on the water, right? On the surface, we're just gliding along it looks effortlessly, right? But underneath, their feet are going 90 mile an hour. So we never know what anybody's really going through, don't we? So by handing somebody a New <coughs> Testament, they might not have immediate results. We're humans, right? We want to see, we want to see immediate results, don't we? But sometimes it takes a while. I have a friend. He's a pastor at a church up in Wilkes-Barre. I've known him for 25 plus years. Uh, just a strong Christian man. He has a monthly men's Bible study that I attend regularly. He has pizza for there. For, so we attend regularly. And I've known him for years. And once I joined the Gideons, he said, you know what? I never knew this. He never told me. He goes, I got saved through a Gideon New Testament. There we go. I said a Gideon New Testament. Through the New Testament. He said when he was a young man, he was in high school and he was in the locker room and he said, the lockers are open. Up there on the shelf laid this New Testament. He said, I don't know. I don't know what made me do it. He said, I just wanted that. There was nobody was looking. He walked over there and pulled it out of that locker and he took it. He took it home and he stuck it in his dresser and it laid there for years. He didn't do anything with it. And he was just having a really bad day one day and he said, I remembered that was there. I pulled it out opened it up and pointed to a scripture and started reading and he said it was a good uh, New Testament that led him to Christ and look he has a prominent church up in Wilkes-Barre and just a godly man I, and I never knew he uh, was through a New Testament through God's word that he got saved so we never know how it's going to affect people because we want to see immediate results we want to see things happen immediately. We were talking about the loss this morning. Imagine, like I said, not never knowing God, never having that opportunity to know God. We look at missionaries, and our church has a few missionaries. We had one that they came in for four months, and they just went back uh, home last a week and a half ago. They went home. Uh, the young girl was from our church. She went to Romania on a missionary trip and actually got married there and they came home, shared what they were doing. Uh, but it, what a op wonderful opportunity it was for her to, to do that missionary trip. But we think of missionary trips of being over in Romania or 
uh, Haiti or some other country, and we think of missionaries are in a jungle somewhere, we have a missionary field right in our own backyard. We have people right in our own communities that have never heard or never had the opportunity to read God's word. So we look at, uh, we look at missionaries being overseas. In a Christian fellowship club, this was probably about eight or nine years ago, we had a young Egyptian girl join the club. And she was a strong Christian. And she expressed the fact that her family had to relocate several times, escaping persecution. And she came there and she was involved with the Christian Fellowship Club and she says, you people take this, you take God's word, you take Christianity for granted. You just, you're like they're lackluster. And, and she was right. She was right. We so much, well, if we don't like this church, we're gonna go to one down the corner. We just take it for, for granted. Our missionary fields are right in our own backyard. We don't have to fly to a different country. One of our Gideon members just came back from Honduras. He went down there for a missionary trip for two weeks. I think it was a little bit of a vacation for him too, but he, he enjoyed it and he handed out uh, quite a few Bibles. So we never know what anybody's actually going through. There's one other opportunity that you can help or get involved with. You've all heard of the Gideon organization. I, but of course, I don't want to assume that. How many ever heard of the Friends of the Gideons? So this is something the Gideons have come out with. It's been out for a little while now. You can actually become a friend of the Gideon. You don't have to become a full member. I was asked probably three or four times I was sent information three or four times before I actually joined. I'm the type of person, if I can't do something 100%, if I don't have time to do it, I'm not going to do it. So I waited for the opportunity was right, and I joined. But you can become a friend of the Gideon. You're saying, well, what's, what's that? The friend of the Gideon allows you to purchase and distribute New Testaments. The only difference is the little emblem isn't on the bottom of the, of the New Testament. But it's the, same, it's the same scripture, the same Bible. But it allows you, uh, there's information on these pamphlets. I have a, a stack of them right there. If you're interested in becoming a friend of the Gideon, please see me afterwards. If you're interested in joining the Gideons, please see me afterwards. You can give me your information. We'll send you uh, uh, some information in the mail. We're having our camp meeting actually Tuesday night. If anybody would like to come to the meeting and just set in, you're more, more than welcome. The May is our membership drive, but obviously we're looking for memberships year-round, not just on May. But we're, we're going to open up our camp meetings that you can come and get involved. You can get more information. You can fellowship with other Gideons, find out what's involved, uh, what's available. Uh, I never thought I would ever be in front of, of a crowd of people speaking. But it's God's spirit leading me to do this. Sometimes you think, well, maybe I'm look foolish. I was mentioned this morning, I've actually met friends that I've known years ago. And it's, God's word is life changing, isn't it? When the Holy Spirit overtakes you, it's a renewing of the mind, isn't it? And they, they knew me back when I was younger and they look at me now and they why are you doing this? Why are you going out and spreading God's word? Have you lost your mind? And I said, yeah, I've lost my mind. I've lost my mind to Christ. And it's not taking your brains and throwing them in the trash. It's just following God's word. It's a renewing of the mind. And so when you're 
if you're interested in becoming getting, please see me afterwards. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just ask for a hedge of protection around this church. Lord, we just uh, thank and praise you for, for everyone here today. We think of the worship music. And Lord, we just ask that you would pierce hearts here and you speak to hearts. Lord, be with Pastor Jay. And Lord, as he leads this church, as he shepherds this church, we just thank and praise you, Lord, for his willingness to do that. Lord, and, and as I mentioned, Lord, who are we that you are mindful of us? Lord, who are we? And Lord, as I go out to speak, Lord, I, sometimes I may seem foolish, but if I'm going to be a fool, I want to be a fool for you, Lord. Lord, I just thank and praise you for this opportunity, this blessing, Lord, that you prestilled onto me today, Lord. Just uh, help me to grow in my faith. Help me to be a better servant of you, Father. And Lord, we just thank and praise you for this day. In Jesus' name, I pray all this. Amen. Thank you. We're going to sing our closing song, if you'd please stand with us.